OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to know how to interpolate. This video is going to focus on linear interpolation just to keep things simple. So I've got two sets of values. I want to find the corresponding value where value one is 300. So what will value two be? Now there is no 300 in the value one list. So 300 lies between these two data points. Now, the simplest way to do this is to use the forecast.linear function. My x value would be this value here. The known y's are the list of value 2's, and the known x's are the list of value 1's. So if I close the bracket and press Enter, it returns a corresponding value for this value 1. Now, this result may not be entirely accurate. If I just show you how it's calculated, I'm actually going to do so by inserting a scatter graph. Now I'm going to change the y axis here. So the minimum value is 750. And then I'm going to draw a trend line. So this value here, 857 is calculated along this trend line. And it may not be the most accurate answer for any given data points. So how do we get a more accurate answer? Well, let me just delete this chart. Well, what we could do is we could use the same forecast.linear function. There's my x value. And my known y's would be here. And my known x's would be here. So I'm only asking it to forecast based on the value below and the value above. Now, if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see I get a different answer. And this may well be more accurate. But the trouble here is, is that I would always have to change the known y's and the known x's for any given x value. So for example, if I change this to 400, I would need to go into this formula and adjust these two arguments. So C5 to C6 would become C6 to C7, and B5 to B6 would become B6 to B7. So how do we make it more automated? Well, I'm just going to change this back to 300, and I'll get rid of this formula. Now, what we can do is utilize the offset function to return the correct known y's and the correct known x's for our value one. Let's just look at how the offset function will do that for us. I'm trying to return the known y's initially. So my reference would be all of the y values, comma. Now rows, so how many rows do I want to offset by within this range? Well, I'd have to look at the position of this value in the value one column. Now it doesn't have an exact match, so I'd have to look at the position of the next smallest value. And the next smallest value is this value here, and that's in position four. So if I put in four as my rows value, comma, my coles value is gonna be zero because I want to return values from this value two column. And the height is going to be two because I want to return two values, the value below value one and the value above it. So if I close the bracket and press enter, it nearly does it, but it actually returns these two values rather than these two. Because when I offset by four rows, it returns from rows five onwards. So what I need to do is set my rows value to three rather than four. So then that returns the correct known y's. Now, this still doesn't automate the formula though, because this number here, the rows number is dependent on this value here. So what I can do is use the match function to return that number. Now, you could also use X match, but I'll use match in this video because everyone's gonna have it. My lookup value would be this value one, comma, and the lookup array, is going to be the value one column. I'm looking up the position of this value in this column, comma. And remember, I'm not gonna find an exact match, so I want to find the next smallest item. And the way to do that is to use less than as your match type. 
close the bracket and press enter. That returns four. But remember, I want to return three. So I have to put minus one at the end of this. So now what I can do is put this formula, if I copy it, into this offset formula. So now if I change this to 400, you can see it's returning the correct known Ys. I'll change this back to 300. Now I'm going to move that up into position here. The known Xs will use almost the same formula. So I'll copy this. Except that your reference would be B2 to B14. Which correspond to these values. So and now I've got my correct known x's and my correct known y's for any given value one. So I can go back to the forecast.linear function. This is my x value. My known y's are here, and my known x's are here. And if I close the bracket, it returns the value two. Now to get one formula that does the whole thing, all I need to do is copy this offset formula and paste it in here. And then do the same for the known x's. Copy this and paste it in here. So now I can get rid of all of that and move this up here. And now I can change my value one to whatever I like. And it's always going to give me a corresponding result. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next video.